Ah, <sighs> so this is a sad sight. You have dropped your motorcycle. It happens to the best of us, and it also happens to experienced riders as well as new riders alike. Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys everything you need to know about after you've dropped your motorcycle, how to pick it up, and what you need to look for in terms of making sure that this bike is still operable and safe. Let's get into it. This beautiful KTM RC390 that is splayed out before me on the ground is in fact one of our beginner bike giveaways. And you might think to yourself, well, Yami, it's on the ground. I don't want it anymore. Trust me, guys, this bike is perfectly fine. I set it down really softly on this uh, mat over here. If you want a chance to win this motorcycle for free, head over to yaminoob.co and become a member and join our exclusive Discord server. Get access to the behind the scenes content, 10% off on our gear store as well. And you can also get all of your entries to win this motorcycle motorcycle and the other giveaway bikes we've got going on. Now, before we pick up this KTM RC390, let's think about some of the reasons that riders actually drop their motorcycle. Now, people drop their motorcycles for all sorts of reasons, but the most common is when you're first starting out, you just lose your footing a little bit and things get a little awkward and the bike just ends up tipping away from you. So I've seen this a lot in parking lots where people end up jamming the front brakes while they have the handlebars turned and then they just kind of end up just awkwardly dropping the bike. I've also seen people lose their footing where there's a pothole or something else and they think their foot's gonna be able to catch it and then all of a sudden they go, uh, 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 and the bike just kind of drops over on its side. If you're doing a slow speed tip over like that, it's pretty different than if you actually low side your motorcycle. As you guys saw, our uh, Royal Enfield giveaway winner actually did end up doing that. You're gonna see a lot more damage on a motorcycle if you're actually riding it and then it tips over or low sides. If you have like a literal like one to three mile per hour drop, your bike's probably gonna be fine, but we're gonna tell you guys everything you need to look at to make sure that this motorcycle still is in good shape. So. Most common ways to drop your bike, like I said, don't hit the front brakes while you're going low speed. Actually try to not use the front brakes at all while you're going like one to three miles per hour in a parking lot. You can get away with just the rear brake at that point. And the second thing is to make sure you've got good footing whenever you're waddling around your bike and learning how to ride it and stuff like that. But with all that being said, let's figure out the proper procedure for picking up your motorcycle so you don't hurt yourself. All right guys, so as I mentioned, I put the KTM RC390 here on the mat for a little bit of a nap for demonstration purposes. Don't worry, I let it down real gentle. The first thing you wanna do is after you've dropped your motorcycle, kind of compose yourself a little bit, kind of take stock of what just happened and don't freak out. Don't immediately try to go and run and do something to the bike. Just be like, crap, I dropped the bike. Let me follow the steps that I learned in this amazing Yami Noob video. The very first step you wanna do is to crank the handlebars over to the side that is against the motorcycle, right? You're gonna be leveraging this bike off of this side, okay? If you turn it the other way, it's gonna be a little awkward, but it can be done. And you're gonna wanna make sure the bars are pointed towards you down here. The bike already fell over, so don't worry too much about the damage. We're gonna look at that in the next step. The next thing you wanna do is you don't wanna approach this motorcycle with your front. You don't wanna go towards this bike and try to pick it up like this with your knee or use like this, because you're really gonna hurt your back doing that. Our back and our legs are much stronger than our arms, and so we're gonna learn how to pick up this motorcycle using both of those. What you wanna do is approach the bike using your back, lower yourself down as much as possible, and then use this hand over here to grab the handlebar, and this hand over here to grab something sturdy like the tail, and then you're gonna use your legs and your back to actually lift the motorcycle back up into its spot. Um, the first degrees of movement is gonna be the biggest effort to get this bike back up, but after that, the motorcycle is gonna very easily tip back up into its proper spot. So let's go ahead and show you guys that right now. So you lower down as much as possible, use one hand over here, one hand over here, and you leverage the bike back up. Walk it up slowly from here, make sure you have a nice perch on it, and then the most important part, make sure you put the kickstand down so you don't drop it again. Now your motorcycle is back up in the upright position and now we're gonna look over any damage that may have occurred to this motorcycle. Once you have the bike upright, you're gonna wanna look at the points of contact that actually hit the ground. These are usually things like bar ends, mirrors, pegs, shifters, tail section, maybe your tail tidy over here, depending on if you're in an incline or something like that. So just kind of take stock of all those pieces on your motorcycle. For example, this KTM RC390, you need to maybe move our mirror back into place. No muss, no fuss. Make sure your levers are in good shape too. 
these can, these things can snap off pretty easily, actually. Um, if you guys have ever ridden off-road on an adventure bike, you'll know that if they have a small tip over, levers typically snap off pretty quickly. Um, this can actually cause a big issue if you've completely snapped off your clutch lever. You may not be able to operate the motorcycle and get it back home. So keep in mind that if you've snapped off part of it, you can definitely still operate this clutch. But if you've really damaged this clutch, you may not be able to ride the motorcycle back home. Um, conversely, on the other side of the motorcycle, if you've compromised your braking system or your throttle or whatever it is on the drop, you may want to take a look at that as well. Um, down here, you obviously have the peg and the shift mechanism. This one over here is for the shifter. The other side is for the brakes. And so you'll want to make sure that these are good. This RC390, for example, has a nice folding peg over here. And so that means that if the bike were to get dropped, it probably would fold into place. Having foldable levers and foldable pegs and those sort of things helps a lot with those sort of things. This over here, it folds. And so that makes the motorcycle not going to have any damage. You might have cosmetic damage over here to the tail or the tail tidy, like I said, but those are usually pretty small potatoes. On the other side of the motorcycle, you might have damage to the exhaust can or maybe the brake lever or maybe your cases as well. I've seen it happen. It's pretty <laughs> but um, sometimes you can drop a bike and you can actually damage the cases of a motorcycle. Uh, this KTM RC390 here, as you can see, it's pretty exposed. And so if this were to drop, you actually might hit this component over here. So those are the kind of things you want to keep in mind after you dropped your motorcycle and make sure that it's still operatable. A couple more important tips around picking up your dropped motorcycle is knowing kind of where it was dropped and how it was dropped. For example, if you're riding off road with a big adventure bike, sometimes it can be really awkward to pick up these bikes and you actually might not be able to by yourself. I remember a time when I was on my desert sled and I was going down this really tricky, big kind of baby head bouldery downhill and I just lost my footing and I dropped the bike and it was at such a steep angle and it was so awkward to try to get leverage over this bike that I actually couldn't pick it up. I had to wait until somebody came through and then they helped me pick it up. Um, so if you're riding off road by yourself with the big adventure bike, kind of keep that in mind because those bikes tend to go uh, nap a lot. They end up napping a lot on the trail. A lightweight dirt bike though is totally different. If you got something like I have, like my Husky 501, you know, you drop that thing on its side, you could pick it up with one hand, really. It's so light, 240 pounds, wet and ready to ride, is very different than a 550 pound adventure motorcycle. Um, the other thing I wanna point out too is that dropping your bike is not just for beginners. I think a lot of us get in our mind where it's like, well, I'm an experienced rider now, I don't drop my bike, it never happens. You could have an off day, man happens to me more often than I would care to admit, especially because I move a lot of bikes around and we always have different bikes here at the shop. I think I drop a bike at least twice a year at this point, um, just on accident. The other day, Whitney and I were filming something with the Aprilia 210660 and I did accidentally drop it just because I didn't see the kickstand wasn't down and I just kind of let it go. And you have that horrible sinking feeling when you, you let it go on the kickstand and it doesn't actually hit the kickstand and you just see it going further and further and you're like, oh God, no, not like this. And then you just kind of let it go a little bit. Um, so don't feel bad if you drop your motorcycle. It happens to the best of us. And most of us, when we start out, we'll drop the bike at least once or twice. I remember I dropped my very first motorcycle, my Yamaha R3 back in 2015. Um, that was uh, you know, pretty embarrassing to be out on an intersection and I lost my footing with this pothole and it just kind of tipped over on its side. Um, but you know, it happens, it's no big deal. Uh, I think that dropping your motorcycle is almost a rite of passage, so to speak. I think that a lot of us um, need to go through that experience to know that it's like, hey, let me make sure I don't drop this motorcycle. The other thing I wanted to point out to is the technique I showed with you guys today, this kind of turning the bars and using your back and leveraging it and kind of walking it up slowly, that will work with virtually any motorcycle. It doesn't matter how big that bike is, you can probably get it up It's if it's on a flat level surface. I've actually seen a video of a young woman picking up a Harley Davidson Road King. I think it was like a 900 pound motorcycle. And granted, those things don't lean over that far when they're dropped. This KTM RC390 was basically horizontal with the ground. But, you know, she was able to, in this video, slowly just pick up the bike, you know, coming off that, that drop. And that's pretty impressive for a young woman to be able to pick up a 900 pound motorcycle off the ground. So using the power of leverage, those ancient Greeks taught us a lot about, you know, triangles and leverage and freaking pillars and whatever else. Um, you know, grab yourself a protractor, kind of look at the bike, align the degrees and use the Pythagorean theorem and just, you know, kind of crank it up using your back. That's going to be the best way to get your motorcycle up off the ground. 
Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a lot of fun teaching you guys how to pick up your motorcycle. If you've dropped your bike in an embarrassing way, I wanna hear it down below in the comment section. Let's share some stories about embarrassing drops on this video so that others feel confident about the fact that they are going to enjoy their motorcycle and drop it from time to time too. Remember, this is a giveaway motorcycle. Even though I dropped it, it's still a fantastic bike. It's still brand spanking new. And we're gonna do a bunch of stuff to this KTM RC390. Key among them is getting new tires, a tail tidy, getting it on track, comparing it to the Ninja 400, doing all kinds of great stuff. Make sure you sign up over at yamminoob.co. Become a member on our exclusive Discord server. Get access to behind the scenes content, 10% off on our store, 10% off on Twisted Road Rentals if you wanna go and check out a new motorcycle, that's a great way to do it. And make sure you get access to all the cool stuff we're doing here. I'm also on the Discord server nearly every single day interacting and chatting with people. So if you want to hang out with me and our live streams, that's the best way to do it too. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Amy Noob!